Praise God, he's real, amen? Thank you, choir. That was beautiful. I tell you what, if you're dead, you ought to be alive this morning, amen? That was beautiful. Thank you. I don't know about you, but my heart was blessed this morning when our kids helped lead our worship. Amen? I don't mean to ruffle anybody, but I'll just share with you, I love when kids are in church. I love to preach to them. They're so responsive. and Their life, amen? It'd be, a, it'd be a dead world if we didn't have any kids, amen? And I won't say anymore. I invite you to open your Bibles this morning, if you will, please. Exodus chapter 13. Today, we are going to embark on a new series. One that I pray by the grace of God will be an inspiration, a help, and a blessing to us as a church. And to those of us in this room today who may seem as though for un, some unbeknown reason you're between a rock and a hard place, to say it mildly. It's an amazing thing how God leads His children. I was thinking this morning, I'm had the privilege to speak to our Sunday school teachers at the 9 o'clock hour. And after we all dispersed out of the room, I watched people going across the campus of the church and various places and directions. And I don't know why, but I, want, I came back into my study and about that time one of the classes down the hall began to play the piano. And it's always an exciting time to me every Sunday morning because it signals the fact that things are beginning to happen around First Baptist Church. I looked out the window and I saw the old auditorium across the way and then I began to think of some things that some of you old timers have shared with me of how God is blessed and moved in this place. And then some of you shared with me that you remember the old auditorium, not the one that's there, but the one that was there that is now in the ground and the other one is over it. And I got to thinking about all the great things that God has done over the history of this church. And during that span of times, there have been times when God seemingly led us through difficult times. They weren't easy times. I would venture to say that over the past few years has not been one of those easy times. And now today we find ourselves praying urgently for our search committee as we're seeking the mind and the will of God for a new pastor, one who will lead our church and guide us through. And it seems as though we today may be, in, may be part in that cul-de-sac right in front of the Red Sea, mountains on both sides. And seemingly the Egyptian army on our heels. No way can we retreat. The only way we can go is forward and it seems as though it's an impossibility. Follow me as I begin reading this morning in verse number 17 of chapter 13. It came to pass that when Pharaoh, God finally, after hundreds of years, going to lead Israel out of Egyptian bondage. And it came to pass when Pharaoh had let the people go that God led them through, not through the way by the land of the Philistines, although that was near for God said, lest peradventure the people repent when they see war and they return to Egypt. In other words, God wasn't going to lead them through the easy way out. He's going to take them the difficult route. But God 
led the people about through the way of the wilderness of the Red Sea, the children of Israel went up harness in the King James. Your translation may say they went up as they are arrayed for battle. That means they were organized in sections of five abreast. They went out in an orderly fashion. Matter of fact, in a military fashion. They went out of the land of Egypt. Notice, Moses took the bones of Joseph with him. Joseph requested that when you leave and God leads you out, you take my bones with you. He trusted God to do that. For he had straightly sworn the children of Israel, saying, God will surely visit you, and you shall carry up my bones away hence with you. And they took their journey from Succoth, encamped in Etham, in the edge of the wilderness. And the Lord went before them, notice, by day in a pillar of cloud to lead them of the way, by night in a pillar of fire to give them light to go by day and night. He took not away the pillar of the cloud by day nor the pillar of fire by night from before the people. Ladies and gentlemen, Robert J. Morgan said the great chapter 14 of Exodus gives us God-given strategies for difficult times. Now notice the first two words, two verses of chapter 14. And the Lord spake, Unto Moses, saying, Speak unto the children of Israel that they turn and encamp before Pyroth between Migdal and the sea over against Belzephon. Before it shall you encamp by the sea. There is recorded here, my friend, ten marvelous ways in handling dilemmas and discouragements. I want you to listen this morning because I think this is important. Getting the Israelites out of Egypt was not God's only goal. He wanted to teach the people as well. And may I share with you, dear folks of First Baptist, God's only goal at this moment is not just to get you a new pastor. But he wants you to listen and to follow him as he teaches us, as he prepares us to do what? To take us through the Red Sea. Why? Because he has some new things on the horizon. It can't all be like it was in the past. There are some new things. There were two ways that you could get out of Egypt to Canaan. Canaan. One was only a few days' journey. The other was much further through the wilderness. And that was the way in which God chose to lead his people. The Egyptians were to be drowned in the Red Sea. The Israelites were to be humbled and proved in the wilderness. But God's way is always the right way though it may seem the most difficult way. We can be sure that through God, that though God may lead us in the way, in, in the, may not lead us the easy way, He will always lead us the right way. Remember, God's proportion, God proportions His people's trials to their own strength. There hath no temptation no test taken you but such as is common to man, but God is faithful. Isn't that what we sang about a moment ago? The faithfulness of God. He'll not suffer you to be tempted or tested above that you're able, but will the temptation make a way to escape that you might be able to bear it? Ladies and gentlemen, the children of Israel began to leave Egypt God went before them in a pillar of cloud by day, pillar of fire by night, and I want you to understand God will never 